Elliot Friedman is back once again to continue stirring the never-ending pot of the Jacob Markstrom trade rumor saga. My goodness, when is this going to end? Well, he has come out with a report that has kind of shown where the Calgary Flames and their management's mindset is at when it comes to a Markstrom trade and kind of what sort of packages are being offered toward the Flames at this time. And we also have a couple of other trade reports to dive into in this video. We'll get into all of that, but first, I want to welcome you to Flames Digest. I am Mark Griffith. If you're new around here and you love the Flames, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all of the latest news, updates, reports, and rumors revolving around your Calgary Flames. We would love to welcome you to the Flames Digest family. But without further ado, let's hop into this Markstrom F-bomb. Kaboom! No, I don't have that uh, graphic anymore for any of the OGs who, of course, remember the F-bomb. And this, for new viewers, F-bomb does not mean that Markstrom cursed. He wasn't out saying whatever choice words. An F-bomb simply means a Friedman report. Friedman F, you get the point. Anyway, I wish I still had that graphic. Let's all pretend it's going down now. Anyway, let's get into what has been said. So this is a tweet from the NHL Trade Alert account. So, on the Jeff Merrick show, there's been an update on Markstrom. Elliot, as in Friedman, believes Calgary is prepared to trade him, but they haven't given up on the idea he will play for them. Trade would be different for every team. Team X, it's this. Team Y, it's this. And there's so much to dissect from this one simple tweet. Now, the first part we have to look at is that the Flames are ready to trade Markstrom. I think we all know that. We know the Flames are ready for life beyond Markstrom with Wolf, Vladar, potentially getting another goalie. We will see. Um, but haven't given up on the idea he will play for them. And I understand that. Management has to say that. Look, this player is still ours. We are ready to play with him. But at the same time, we all know how upset Markstrom is to be here. There's no point holding him hostage. You know, saying that, oh, he might play for us, that'll just make him even more unhappy. Either say we are dedicated to him or say, yes, we will grant him the trade. He has probably wanted for months now, ever since he has started to hate playing for us. Now, the other part we really need to dissect from this is that bottom part saying that, you know, the trade package is looking kind of different from every team. So team X might be providing two prospects or two prospects and a pick. The next team might be offering just one pick. The next team might be offering, you know, a pick and a prospect. But either way, well, we will just have to wait and see what that package does end up looking like. To continue that from the same account, we have it's not a one-size-fits-all trade, meaning a pick and prospect as a general return. So we know that's kind of the standard for Jacob Markstrom's value as of right now is a pick and a prospect. But at that point, I don't really know if that means that it's, you know, a very high draft pick in this draft or a future draft. And a quality prospect, one of those has to at least take a hit. I don't know if Markstrom value is that high as it stands right now, but let's continue here. Elliot names New Jersey, LA, Toronto, and Ottawa as possible teams. We've pretty much talked about all those teams lately. LA, we've talked about in the past, not anytime recently, but it's no surprise that they've been mentioned. Calgary has made it clear, while they are willing to do it, it's something that has to make sense for them. They aren't going to do it just for the sake of doing it. And once again, you know, it makes sense for management to say this, look, we're not going to jump at the first pick we are offered and run with it and just say, look, the Markstrom trade saga is over. Obviously, they want to get a, some good value back for him, some great assets, because he is valuable. He's a great goalie. But the one part of this, again, that I really don't like is showing they aren't just going to do it for the sake of it. Well, that doesn't need to create more drama in the Markstrom camp of saying, Oh my goodness, just trade me already. It sucks being here. We don't need another Noah Hannafin situation. Or you could even go back and say, you know, a Gaudreau, Kachuk, even Adam Fox situation. I just said all of, I said the Mount Rushmore of Judases of this organization um, at the current moment. I'm sorry for mentioning them. But we don't need another one of those situations with Markstrom where, look, if he's held hostage and he's so unhappy here and they force him to play kind of thing, then when he's gone, he'll go to his buddies and say, do not sign in Calgary. It sucks. The management sucks. You know, playing there was terrible. The flames are awful. We don't need more of that. We want to avoid that. So it might be better to trade Markstrom. And look, if it's not the ideal package, that might be okay. That being said, of course, go for the best thing you can. There's still time up until the draft. But don't go into next season with Jacob Markstrom is at least what I think. Because he's already upset at management. And if you've forgotten, let's actually jump into that real quick. So back at the trade deadline, he was not happy. So when he was asked about kind of his name being run through the mud of the trade rumors, this is what he said. How everyone in this room handled everything, I think it's been really good. Now he is talking about the other players here. 
the whole situation and everything. Am I happy about that? No, I'm not. He was so unhappy about, you know, his name in the trade rumors and potentially being traded to New Jersey because we didn't know that they you know, he was going to move his or waive his no movement clause and then it get totally revoked. And he was just, I mean, he was just upset. Let's face it. And to continue his quote, he said, and I think it could have been handled a lot differently from up top. So this shows, you know, the guy was probably decently upset at Craig Conroy, of course, but he also could have been very upset at the guys above Conroy. Maybe some of the owners, you know, some of the uh, CEO, whatever, you know, all the positions above them. Uh, the ones who might have actually truly been the ones allegedly are the ones who actually vetoed a trade and nixed Markstrom's chances of moving out of Calgary when it seems like he wanted to go to a contender. Who knows how New Jersey season would have been if they had acquired Markstrom at the trade deadline. I mean, they ended up having pretty much the same record as the Flames um, at the end of the season. Um, they also sucked, but either way, it's it's an interesting situation. I'm sure what Markstrom is thinking is he just wants to go somewhere where he can once again play with dolls. If you haven't seen this video recently, it is hilarious. A lot of people don't even remember that Markstrom was originally on the Florida Panthers. He shot a hilarious video. Um, I believe it was an upper deck uh, promotion at the time. Just hilarious playing with his Carey Price and Broder dolls. So good. If you haven't seen that, I mean, I'm sure Markstrom wishes he was still in Florida right now. They are on the brink of winning a cup. Fingers crossed they can do it. But either way, the Markstrom trade saga gets more interesting. Management has kind of revealed the truth about how they feel about it. And it's not exactly the best news. But let me know what you think down below. Obviously, myself, just like any Flames fan, wants the most value they can get back. The most assets, the best assets, the highest picks. Whether it's the 7th, the 10th, whatever. But you also got to take care of the player and avoid a whole other Johnny Gaudreau situation, we will call it. Now let's get into some more trade reports because a little bit more was talked about um, in terms of Elliot Friedman talking about some certain trades involving the Flames. So right here, more on Natchez and Lina here. Pierre also mentioned, oh, well, this was actually Pierre Lebrun. Pierre uh, also mentions Calgary as interested in Natchez along with the other teams in the previous post. Uh, it was... It doesn't really matter. Who cares? We just only care about the Flames. Um, and Winnipeg is taking calls on Ehlers. That doesn't matter. We don't care about Ehlers or Line A here. We are talking about Natchez because he has been rumored to go to the Flames in the past few weeks. Um, is it smart for the Flames? I'm not all too sure, but it is interesting that it looks as though Natchez will be traded. So uh, just this is all from the same account here, NHL Trade Alert. Uh, Elliot, there we go back to Friedman, has been told Carolina has talked to some teams, including the Flames, about what they want. Some teams may not have what Carolina is looking for um, and may be looking at doing a three-team deal, as we've seen in the past, like the Chris Tanev deal. Um, and then again on the 32 Thoughts podcast, Elliot says, while Natchez hasn't said anything publicly, he thinks privately Natchez made it pretty clear that he'd like to move on. Maybe he'd want to come to Calgary. I don't know. Do we want him here? I don't know. Team uh, has time before making a decision. Elliot says things have picked up since the weekend. And it's as this video goes up, I believe it is Friday now. So it's been a little while since, um, you know, these Natchez rumors have really exploded again. This was sort of midweek 32 Thoughts podcast. But either way, it shows Natchez could be on the move. And Calgary, once again, is involved in that. Um... And this is kind of interesting. There's two sides to the Natchez acquisition that could potentially happen. Here's one side. So the Flames competitive timeline. If the Flames committed to a rebuild, acquiring a 23-year-old with Natchez's profile for a veteran would make perfect sense. You'd get a young player entering his prime years just as the team hopefully starts to emerge. And that one was from the New York Times or The Athletic. Um, and that's an interesting point of view because it does make sense if everything goes to plan. Um, but there's some other points of view, as you can see here, you know, from Calgary Hockey Now. Four reasons the Flames should not trade for Marty Natchez. We won't dive into that. And then Flames Nation. A Calgary Flames trade for Martin Natchez would be repeating the mistakes of 2015. Essentially, what all of this boils down to is if they were to acquire Natchez, it's an unnecessary acceleration of a rebuild. You know, the Flames really don't need to be going after any quality, quality prize NHL-ready players right now. They can invest more into the future because we want to be a powerhouse. Um, we want to be perennial contenders when it comes down to it and really just go down as a dynasty, hopefully in the late 2020s or even early 2030s, or it could just continue on forever. Why not just win the cup every year? Um, but either way, the Marty Natchez trade saga, 
I kind of hope that sooner than later, the Flames are just removed from that conversation because it doesn't really make all that much sense. But again, let me know down below if you would want to acquire Natchez. Now let's get into the comment of the day, everyone's favorite part of the day, because that is pretty much when I stopped yapping. And this one, once again, of course, has to go with the Jacob Markstrom trade rumors. Do we talk about anything else here? No, we don't. I like this comment here from AJ Singh. He said, as a die as a diehard, I'm assuming, as a diehard Sens fan, I like Markstrom. No way Pinto is involved in a trade because that has been speculated, unless it's for a younger player that can impact the team three years from now. Again, I like Markstrom, but no way he's close to a top 10 pick alone. That's that, ooh. I would think around 20 cents have the 25th pick. Also, I think Flames should rebuild, not retool. I don't like construction of roster, especially when C and D allow you to compete for cups. Now, the first thing I'll say is, when talking about rebuilds, anything you hear from a Sens fan, you take with a grain of salt because they clearly don't know how to do a rebuild. They once again missed the playoffs this year. But it's interesting here because is Markstrom alone worth the seventh overall pick? Flames fans would love to think so. I personally do not think so as much as I would want that. Um, so they would have to work out some kind of crazy trade. But no matter what, I'm sure there will be more trade rumor videos about Ottawa and Jacob Markstrom in the near future. But we'll just stay tuned for that. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like what you saw here today and have a wonderful rest of your day.